Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on wherever you are in the world, and welcome to day two of MBA Spotlight here on GMAT Club. So, I'm Linda, I am the GMAT Club moderator here to host this great session with Tepper School of Business. So, Jackie will be giving us a great presentation about the MBA program offered by Tepper and what makes it distinct and why you should apply for the MBA program. Uh, so, before I hand over to Jackie, I want to quickly mention three things. So the first thing is, if you could like uh, this video, that would be brilliant. And if you could also subscribe to the GMAT Club channel, so we could continue to bring you guys fantastic information and provide a great support community as you kind of work your way through the MBA applications process. Um, another thing would be that we are going to be offering application waivers at the end of the session. So please stick around uh, for both presentation, obviously, and the Q&A session. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention was that if there's any questions that we don't get to in the session, uh, Tepper will be offering a, a Zoom session at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, so if there's anything that you guys can't kind of get addressed here, there's going to be another opportunity later on in the day. Um, anything else? One more thing. If you've got any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat box to the right of the screen um, and we'll address them in the Q&A session when we get there at the end of the presentation. So I think that's everything from my side. I'll hand over to you, Jackie, and you can take from there. Thank you. All right. Sounds great. Thank you, Linda. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon University presentation. My name is Jackie Otto. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm an associate director of, of master's admissions at the Tepper School. I've worked here for over eight years, meeting with MBA candidates like yourself around the world, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I also want to say congratulations. Congratulations on saying, pick me you are signing yourself up for an adventure, a transformative experience from business and careers to relationships and even children. An MBA can completely change you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. For now, let's get started and learn about why the science of management and the art of leadership matter in an MBA program. Next slide, please. I wanna start off this presentation with a question. How do you solve a problem with no precedent? Think about that for a minute. How do you solve a problem with no precedent? It's never happened before. What do you do? What do you use? Next slide, please. The answer is management science. And you may be asking yourself, what is management science? This is a concept that was first developed by Carnegie Mellon faculty when the business school first appeared in 1949. It was a defining moment for management education. Instead of looking in a rearview mirror, using only case studies, our faculty wanted to teach students how to solve a problem that has no precedent. So how do you forecast, predict, and model the answer to problems that have no precedent? By mastering analytics, that is using data to make better business decisions. So what is the art of leadership? This is a personalized approach to leadership development. The science of management and the art of leadership. One without the other won't lead to the success that you're looking for. We believe that this combination of improved leadership skills in an analytical toolkit is what separates Tepper MBA from other MBA program graduates and will set you apart in the marketplace. And this is why the science of management and the art of leadership is important in an MBA program. Next slide. Analytics training. So how is it done? Large organizations have leveraged analytics as a competitive advantage. Optimization, what is the best decision I can make along many scenarios? Predictive analytics, detecting a pattern based on prior data. And then descriptive analytics, a dashboard, visualizing the data. Next slide, please. Leadership development. When we talk about leadership, we specifically mean leadership development. Uh, we, the Accelerate Leadership Center was established to support and foster our student leadership development as a part of the core curriculum. So not a separate workshop or certification, but really throughout the entire MBA experience at Tupper. We hired executive coaches previously working in corporate roles to support our students. And you'll have access to these coaches both as a student and as an alum of the program. And leadership can be learned, so therefore it can be taught. And we're gonna meet you where you are. For some of you, this experience may be an amazing, eye-opening opportunity to build some skills that may feel elusive right now. And for others, you may be thinking, you've already developed some strong leadership skills and this leadership development piece might not be as important to you. 
well, we can help you to continue to improve in this area and become even more sophisticated. Next slide, please. We believe that most leaders are taught, not born. It's not merely about style or personality. It's about identify, identifiable behaviors that can be adjusted to achieve optimal performance. We'll provide a customized leadership development assessment, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and build a personal leadership roadmap. Our Accelerate Leadership Center coaches work with you on the key leadership qualities and behaviors that lead to career success. And there are three steps to this leadership development, taking stock, developing your toolkit, and putting theory into practice. So taking stock, assessments are taken at the very beginning of your Tupper MBA experience. And then you create a plan to implement during your two years or 32 months if you're in the part-time program, working with your executive coach. Developing your toolkit. So one-on-one -on -one coaching on these development areas that you've identified from the assessments. Most students meet with our coaches one or two times a mini, as well as some of the communication coaches, which are current students as well. There's workshops designed to specific skills as well. Some of those include mindfulness, which is certainly very applicable now, conflict management, leadership in the sexes, and workplace adaptability. And then putting theory into practice. With experienced executive coaches, you'll create a plan and practice these skills during specific behavioral opportunities, ranging from your internship, if you're in the full-time program, your actual job, if you're in the part-time program, student club leadership roles, or some of the team-based initiatives that you might have in the curriculum, or some of your case competitions. Now let's look at the other component of what makes the Tepper MBA experience different, and that's the analytics training. Next slide, please. We view analytics as the transformation of data into information we can use to improve decision making. These tools include statistics, probability, and mathematical modeling. And we will teach you these. So no matter where you're coming from academically or professionally, we will teach you how to use these. Analytics is used across all business fundamentals. So no matter what you are studying at Tepper, you're going to be using analytics in some way, shape, or form. The program is not chock full of math and hardcore analytics stuff, but more so the application of how to use analytics for better decision making. And Professor Mike Trick was known to say, without using data to make a decision, you're just another person with an opinion. Let that sink in for a second. Without using data to make a decision, you're just another person with an opinion. And I remember when he said that to our incoming students and how, how much that struck me. And it's very, very true. Next slide, please. So capstones. These are two examples of projects our students completed in their capstone courses. These projects bring together all of your business fundamentals, analytics, and leadership skills to solve a real business problem. The first one, MBA students in the energy business track worked with a green tech energy company called Fluence to investigate the economic viability of solar plus storage, solar plus storage based power plants. It's a mouthful. Um, students evaluated data to determine if solar plus storage could provide an alternative to natural gas peak demands. They had to assess bandwidth and use data from natural gas plants, create a hypothet hypothetical model of how much energy the solar plus storage approach could provide, and then create cash flow models comparing the cost to the income. One student said that they learned about the flexibility of utility scale energy storage technology and its huge potential in helping overcome major drawbacks of the current power grids and facilitate the transition to the grid of the future. And certainly power grids were a hot topic here in the United States around this winter. And the second project, MBA students in the tech strategy and product management track worked with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center Enterprises, also known as UPMC, to develop a marketing and commercialization plan for their cloud-based healthcare operating system called HCOS. One student in the capstone said, we got the chance to tackle real problems and provide actionable recommendations that UPMC could actually implement. And the biggest skill I was able to sharpen and apply during this project was synthesizing data and a cohesive product strategy. And the project provided a unique opportunity to work on a problem aimed at transforming the provider payer patient relationship. These projects highlight how Tepper students are prepared to be agile leaders in a rapidly changing business environment. Next slide, please. In the MBA program, analytics is at the heart, it's at the core of the Tepper approach, rounded out by business fundamentals for a robust analytical core. 
And the great thing about the Tupper MBA is that the information I just shared holds true no matter which, deli no matter which delivery format you choose. Next slide, please. Across the MBA programs, part-time or full-time, we have the same faculty teaching, the same material, and it allows for students to be able to transfer across the program formats if they are interested. It is the same MBA degree. There's flexibility between these formats and there are students who might start in the part-time program who switch to the full-time in order to take advantage of this opportunity and obtain an internship. It's often worthwhile for students considering a function and industry switch or students who are interested in starting their MBA but aren't ready to dive in all the way, uh, leave their job or move to Pittsburgh. After completing the core coursework, this is when it's a feasible option to transfer from part-time into the full-time program. In my many years of working at Tepper, I've seen it all, I've heard it all, but I've seen students who started in the part-time flex program, transferred to part-time online hybrid, and then finish taking daytime classes in the full-time program. There's a lot of flexibility for our students. And you're going to have the same resources in these program formats. So leadership coaches, the career services, the academic support, you'll have access to all of these as well as clubs and activities as a student, no matter what program to which you may enroll. Next slide, please. We offer 13 concentrations and several tracks and dual degree options in the MBA program at Tepper. It is a STEM MBA, so no matter what concentration, track, or dual degree you choose, you will have a STEM MBA. The curriculum is set up with the core courses first, so by the time you're choosing your electives to build your concentrations or tracks, you'll be making an informed decision about your academic path. Everyone must graduate with at least one concentration, and these are built by taking several elective courses. You don't have to declare these or apply to these, and you can make pivots depending on your interests as they may change, and you choose electives that are relevant to your academic and professional goals. Tracks and dual degrees do require an additional permission. They are led by faculty within the Tepper School and across campus, and students apply to these academic opportunities once admitted to the track. Um, they'll begin taking those electives from a set list, and they'll also have a set capstone specific to that track as well. Tracks are often with coursework across Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, concentrations tend to be the most popular option. Tracks uh, certainly have specific professional goals in mind, um, so they may not be a fit for everyone, and that's okay. Um, let's see, dual degrees within Carnegie Mellon and with our JD dual degree is with the University of Pittsburgh. They do also require separate applications um, to the respective programs. Most of these programs would have our students taking their MBA coursework first for the first year with, with an internship over the summer and then a hybrid of other programs in the second year and in the summer. Uh, students in dual degrees often finish at the end of August in their second year of the full-time program. So just a couple of months and you receive two uh, degrees from Carnegie Mellon University. Next slide, please. Outcome by the numbers. Here you can see a bit of an overview of our Master's Career Center. They meet with students throughout the year. They partner with recruiters who connect with our students for corporate presentations, case competitions, trips for site visits to companies during our academic breaks, and they work closely with our professional clubs. And honestly, the Master's Career Center staff are some of the greatest people I know at Tepper. They truly care about your success and want to support you in your career journey during and after Tepper. Next slide, please. Employment by industry. You can see here that the tech industry is one of the largest where our students end up with consulting right next to it, followed by financial services, manufacturing, biopharma, and several others. Next slide, please. Now looking at outcomes by function, we can see that consulting leads the, the area here with general management, finance, marketing, all in a close race for the next most popular industry. And some are surprised that technology and operations might be lower figures here. Uh, and most of our students move out of technical functions into the business side of the technology industry. Um, so, and also classifications of operation roles can be found under general management or other leadership development program roles that don't end up in the operations category. Um, so that explains kind of why things look a little bit different here than you might expect. Next slide, please. Um, students might be surprised that 30% of our students move to West Coast, but it really makes sense considering the tech industry and where a lot of those hubs are. Um, it's the geographic leader where our students end up after their MBA 
Um, but certainly the Northeast Mid-Atlantic region is a powerhouse as well. So East Coast, West Coast tend to be the most popular areas where students end up after their MBA. Um, next slide, please. We work with top employers, including Amazon, Deloitte, Google, McKinsey, Bain, PwC, Microsoft, AT Kearney, and many, many more organizations. Um, and this a little point here about this, as well as geography or function or industry, um, you know, looking at what numbers might be the most popular certainly might be helpful for you, but please take into consideration it's not about what's most popular. It's really about what's the best fit for you and where you want to go and what you want to do. Um, so students being transparent with their career counselor can be really helpful in guiding you through that process. Um, so if there's a place, you know, a remote city somewhere in a different country or a certain company, you know, that maybe we haven't worked with before, um, you know, talking to your counselor and helping them support you as best as possible is really the most important. So don't let those numbers, you know, um, intimidate you or scare you away if there's something that maybe isn't the highest uh, percentage number of where our students end up. Certainly, we help all of our students become successful in their career journey. Next slide, please. Thank Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm not from Pittsburgh originally, but I've lived here for over 17 years. Um, and there are all the amenities that you would want and find in a big city here in Pittsburgh. If you're a sporty spice like myself, we have football, baseball, hockey, professional teams. We have outdoor recreation with hiking, biking, kayaking. Um, and you can bike from Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C. It'll take you three or four days to do it, but it's an option. And I have several friends and MBA students that have done this. Um, with arts and culture, we have gallery crawls, musicals, symphonies, operas, um, concerts from Post Malone to Taylor Swift. We've had so many performances in Pittsburgh, and we're very excited to welcome a lot of them back. Um, we're also a foodie city. Lots of great restaurants and cuisines to try. Uh, we're rated as one of the top food cities. Uh, it's end up becoming a tech scene also with Google, Facebook, Uber, Microsoft to small startups like Duolingo to see a new startup actually, and Robotney, a Tepper startup in the vertical farming industry. The quality of life is important for you, but also for anyone that you might be bringing with you. So think about any resources they may need when you're busy off getting your degree. Having, having city resources with a smaller town feel is a great place for families. We're also very single friendly too. And they're great neighborhoods, very close to campus. And depending on what you're looking for, you can often find it, um, likely within walking distance of campus too. There are free CMU shuttles and buses that run through the Port Authority as well with your student ID. And also when you're thinking of your cost of your MBA, which certainly many of you are, rightly so, we also want you to consider the cost of living. And I'm happy to share with how affordable Pittsburgh is. A one bedroom apartment here is around $1,000 in a walkable neighborhood and you get a bedroom, a living room, a dining area, a kitchen and a bathroom all to yourself. Um, and there are a wide variety of apartment styles here from new and modern facilities as well as old Victorian houses that have been made into separate units. Uh, quite a few students spend less and spend around seven or $800 in rent with a two bedroom apartment and a roommate. And the housing market here uh, seems to be moving a lot faster than before. Uh, it's still pretty affordable, and some students in the past have bought houses here when moving to Pittsburgh. Um, some alumni have rented out their properties or houses to students year after year as well. Um, we do provide a housing guide for students uh, coming to Tupper during the welcome weekend, and often current students are happy to answer questions about neighborhoods, amenities, rental companies. Um, so when you're thinking of the cost of the MBA, you shouldn't have to stress about the cost of living as well. Next slide, please. Our global alumni network. Our alumni are amazing, talented, successful, and down to earth individuals. They are all over the world and it's pretty amazing how they all know each other. They are super connected. Um, the network is very strong, tight knit and powerful. There are global chapters, city chapters within the United States. Um, and though the school is based in Pittsburgh, our alumni network is largely located in cities like New York, Seattle, San Francisco area, Washington, D.C., and many other major retro, metro regions. Um, Pittsburgh is also a great city and affordable, um, and there are some alumni who have decided to stay here after graduation as well because it is so affordable and the opportunities that exist in various industries here like consulting, healthcare, technology, and much more. Next slide, please. 
So funding your MBA, speaking of being affordable, the MBA education is an investment for you. And though it may feel daunting at times with the cost, take some time now to research opportunities to fund your education. There are a wide variety of scholarships within Tepper and external to the school to investigate. So for Tepper, you're gonna to wanna to have the strongest application possible to be considered for our merit scholarships. Um, there are only a few specific scholarships that may ask for an additional essay. Most are going to be through the materials within your actual application that we'll use to identify scholarship recipients. And candidates are often informed at admission the scholarships that they are awarded. Other awards to explore through some of our partner organizations like the Consortium for Graduate Study and Management, and this focuses on supporting diversity and inclusion within business programs, specifically reducing the underrepresentation of African American, Hispanic American, and Native American students. Uh, the Forte Foundation is an organization dedicated to increasing the representation of women in business. Reaching Out or Ramba is dedicated to supporting LGBTQ plus candidates pursuing the MBA, and Yellow Ribbon Awards are given to military veterans. Many of these organizations also have pre-MBA events to consider, um, so please take some time to search through their websites to learn more about their funding opportunities that they may provide. Next slide, please. So for the fall 2022 start in the MBA program, we will have several application deadlines to consider. Um, I believe this information is from last year, um, so don't hold true to these dates, but round one deadline is anticipated for an early October deadline. Uh, round two is typically early January and round three in March. And then finally in round four, a deadline of mid-April. And candidates should consider applying when they feel they have the strongest application. For our international candidates considering the full-time program, we highly encourage you to apply in rounds one or two to allow for enough time in processing any visa documents. Uh, during the Chart Your Pass series, you're, you'll have an opportunity to hear more about the application and tips from the Executive Director, Kelly Wilson, on how to strengthen your candidacy. Um, but we really want you to apply when you're ready and you feel most confident in submitting your application. And we wanna make it as easy as possible to apply to Tepper. I know it's easy for me to say that I'm on the other side, but we really do wanna make it as easy as possible for you to apply. We ask for your unofficial transcripts, your professional goals, a resume, one recommendation, and one essay prompt. Um, we accept the GRE, GMAT, and executive assessment scores that are within the past five years. Um, and this past year, we did allow candidates to apply for a test waiver. It was built within the application, and candidates who were granted this test waiver and admitted to TEPR were required to take a math prep course as a prerequisite for enrolling in the program. This assured that candidates starting the program were equipped and prepared for the quantitative components of this curriculum. Next slide, please. And finally, good luck. We know that this MBA journey is at times daunting. You're putting yourself out there. You're being vulnerable, saying, pick me. And we want to support you through this process. While you're learning more about the Tepper MBA program, consider other opportunities to engage with our community. We have a Chart Your Past series of videos. We have the MBA journey featuring Tepper stories from the application to graduation and beyond. You can visit with us virtually through our online evening class visits that are going on right now, this summer and into the fall. Um, these are part-time classes, but they still give you an idea of what the academic rigor and the curriculum may uh, feel like for you, no matter what format you're considering. And we do hope to have uh, in-person classes for visiting uh, this fall coming up here in, in Pittsburgh as well. We also have contact a current student as an option. We have MBA admissions ambassadors from all of our program formats available to answer questions that you might have about the Tepper MBA experience. And they were once in your shoes not that long ago, trust me. Uh, we'll be attending many virtual affairs this summer, so please stay tuned for all of our events coming up. And be sure to connect with us as well. We're happy to help, we're here for you. So reach out to us through email at mba-admissions.andrew.cmu.edu or give us a call. And we look forward to hearing from you and hope to see you at an upcoming event soon. Best of luck to you in your MBA journey and continue charting your path to the Tepper School of Business at Carnegie Mellon University. Thanks so much. And I'll turn things over to questions here in a second. Thank you very much for the presentation, Jackie. Really appreciated. Um, and thank you, Jerry. I've seen you've been kind of like very active answering all the questions I've been getting via the, the chat function. 
Um, so I guess in order to answer as many questions as we can in the time that we've got available, I will jump straight into the questions. Uh, these questions have been given before the session, so they were posed to GMAT Club. Uh, so I'll go through one by one. So the first one that we've got here is, as the majority of Indians are coming from an engineering background with a 730 plus GMAT, how does the admissions committee perceive a mid-range GMAT coming from non-engineering background? That's a great question. And it's a very holistic overview of our applicants. So there's not one thing that's going to get you in. There's not one thing that's going to keep you out. Um, so certainly we look at your academics and look at your transcripts and understand what you studied, where you studied, um, and how that might connect to your goals as well as the test score. That can be helpful too in understanding a little bit more about your academic preparation coming to Tepper. We look at your professional experiences. You know, what have you been doing? Uh, what skill sets do you have? What leadership opportunities have you had? How have you made an impact? And we look at your fit with the school. How are you going to be in our community? We're certainly a smaller MBA program, can, you know, among some of the top 20 programs and smaller on purpose. And um, so there's a lot of group work. There's a lot of opportunity to help and support each other in the community. So how are you going to fit in that environment? Um, so we look at everything. I know it certainly can feel um, competitive because it is. There certainly are a lot of candidates um, from all over the world applying to MBA programs. So think about the things that you have control over in your application. You can't change where you went to school or what you studied necessarily. Um, the test score is a great place to spend some time and energy because you have influence over this. So, you know, we're in the summer right now and we have applications in October and January for international candidates. So there's plenty of time to really work on that test if that's something that's a priority for you. Um, but it's certainly an opportunity of influence there, uh, as well as your essays, maybe in some of your work experiences too, and, and getting more opportunities to lead others or guide others. Um, so think holistically what you have to offer as a candidate. And again, not one thing is going to get you in or keep you out from coming to Tupper. Thank you so much. Um, so the next one was, uh, and having been through the process myself, it's probably one thing that a lot, every applicant probably thinks about. Um, how would you address a weakness in the application? Everyone has one, and that's okay. Like I think you need to give yourself permission to know that there are opportunities for growth. That's what I call weaknesses, to be quite honest. Um, they're really that's why you're getting an MBA. A lot of students feel that they should have all of these skills achieved already, and what's the point of getting your MBA then if you've achieved all these things and mastered all these skills? Um, you want to work on some of these things in the MBA program. Um, but if there is something glaring within your application, perhaps, you know, a, a semester at school or a gap in your resume, those are certainly things that you can address in an optional essay. Um, it's not an opportunity to really reiterate why Tepper is the right fit for you, but really a place to address um, any concerns that you think that we might have on the admissions committee. Um, so if there is a, a legitimate concern or um, perhaps a, a, you know, opportunity to explain or provide more information, that would be the best place to do that. But please know that everyone coming to the MBA program does have opportunities for growth. And um, there's likely a student in the program that will have that as a strength that can share that with you and help you improve and grow. And there are strengths that you have that other people don't. Uh, and that's what I love about the Tepper School is that we're a smaller program and students really have an opportunity to grow their skill set in a safe place, in an intimate environment. Um, and again, you have strengths and, and you're going to share those with others and they'll share those with you. Um, so, yeah, that's how I would address the, the, that in the application. Yeah, no, brilliant response. Yeah, completely agree. It's all about, you know, like you said, that's why, that's why we're doing the MBA process. Yep. That's why we went to school in the first place. So the next question, um, in what scenarios would extracurricular achievements be highly attractive in an applicant's profile? And in what scenarios would extracurriculars be irrelevant? Um, I would say in terms of your extracurricular, extracurricular involvement, um, you know, in your resume, there's a great place to ha like add some hobbies and skills or perhaps in college, um, any, you know, groups or things that you might have been a part of, but certainly leadership opportunities within those um, you know, leading a team, um, working through conflict, a lot of those can be helpful skills for you as you're embarking on the MBA, um, because some students might not have had as many opportunities in their professional roles to do some of this as an individual contributor. Um, so adding some of that in your resume or having that in the interview process as well 
um, can be great stories for us to learn more about how you work through conflict, a challenge, um, helping others be successful. Um, and it's also fun to learn about, you know, a little bit more about who you are as a whole person, um, not just your work experience or your academics, but really what are the things that you like to do and how are you giving back to help others? Um, so in terms of being irrelevant, um, I don't know. I feel like that's a part of who you are and what you like to do. And that's important to us. So I feel like it should always be relevant um, in your application and, and you bringing your whole self to the Tupper program. Yeah. Okay, the next question. So what is it about Tupper that contributes to its good tech industry placements as seen from employment reports? Yeah, I mean, it's just been growing and growing year after year, and it's certainly a popular area. I feel like some of the non-tech companies are now even branding themselves as tech companies, um, and we imagine that this is going to continue. Um, so having the connections to Carnegie Mellon University certainly are helpful, too. The companies that have been coming to our campus um, for many years are also looking to hire MBA students as well. Um, and some of the students coming to Tepper with technical backgrounds certainly can be valuable. Um, but even students without that background, we help you through the, the opportunities across campus, um, whether it's elective courses or clubs and organizations. I think through all that support, it makes our students stand out to be able to have some of that technical uh, acumen and be able to speak that language, language as well as the leadership skills that we offer to through the Accelerate Leadership Center. Um, so it makes a really attractive student um, who's not just the smartest person in the room, but really can be the leader to guide um, and develop strategy um, that the tech industry is looking for. So certainly um, just the notoriety of Carnegie Mellon has, help, has been helpful, but I think with the MBA program, the, the technical skills, the analytics, and the leadership components all together make our students very attractive. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next one. So Carnegie Mellon University is known for its computer science program. Does TEPA benefit from it directly in some way? And if so, how? Yeah, like the last question I would see, you know, in terms of the notoriety of the school, like it's been on the radars for a lot of uh, companies to come to our campus to recruit students for some of those technical roles. But um, branching out with the business school, we've had more companies connect with us and, and recruit our students as well. So I think uh, it's a mutual beneficial relationship now that it, they're not just coming for those technical positions, but um, coming for our MBA students as well. So I guess now I move to more of the kind of like the, the diversity within the, the student body. What kind of students in terms of personality and outlook do you see adding the most value to Texas community? Yeah, so again, being a smaller school, we're looking for students that want to be a leader. Um, we really expect students to be a leader at some point during the MBA program. Um, There's so many opportunities for you to learn and grow those skills uh, in the program. So we're looking for students that are not going to shy away from those opportunities, um, that really want to get their hands dirty and to dive in um, to reflect on their skills and where they are and what they can grow into. Um, but I would say, you know, the students are naturally curious um, they're very humble and they're very down to earth. And that's something coming to Carnegie Mellon. I felt uh, I've worked at other institutions here within Pittsburgh. I was a little nervous about in terms of sort of the demeanor um, and the community because, you know, these are some of the smartest people in the world. Um, but really everyone is down to earth and here willing to offer help and guide people from alumni to faculty to students, staff. Um, everyone is on the same page, on the same level. Um, there are no egos or airs about people. Um, so we're really looking for students that are, you know, willing to be in that type of environment to not knock to not knock people down to get ahead, but really are there to support each other um, in the community. So that's it's even something we talk about during the interview. You're like, how have you helped other people be successful? Um, so that's something to think about if you're considering Tupper and maybe a pointer that you could use if you do end up interviewing with us. Um, but that's the kind of person that we're looking for. Students that are willing to grow, um, that are humble, down to earth, but also looking to help others around them be successful too. Yeah. No, brilliant. Thank you, Jackie. So the next question. If a candidate hasn't tried multiple roles slash industries, but stayed at the same firm, 
what is Tepper's, what is Tepper Adcom's view of the less adventurous candidate? That's okay. I mean, everyone's going to have different experiences professionally, academically. Um, likely there are transferable skills, no matter what experiences you've had, that are going to help you get to your goals. And that's really more important to us. Um, it, it's not about the time or the role that you've had, but really about the skill sets that you've developed or um, want to develop and how that fits with your professional goals. Um, you know, we're, we're looking for students that have had some great experiences already, but we know, again, you're getting your MBA for a reason. So if there's a more adventurous opportunity that you're looking for post-MBA, um, sharing that with us in your goals and how we can help you be successful and fitting that within Tepper and Carnegie Mellon is really important. So it's not about, um, you know, what roles you've had and where you've been working. Certainly we'll look to all of that, but the transferable skills are more important to us about what you've had and where you want to go and how we'll help you get there. So this next question, I guess, kind of might touch on what was already addressed before, um, at least the second part of it, in terms of what key factors TEPA looks for. So um, how are different applications evaluated and what are the key factors that TEPA looks for? Yeah, so everyone's different. I mean, there's no one typical application uh, working at TEPA for over eight years. Uh, I feel like I've seen it all, but I, I, every year I'm quite surprised in terms of what students have done coming to TEPA. Um, so we look at where you are, what you've done academically, um, professionally, and personally as well, and how that all fits with where you want to go and how we can help you get there. Um, again, not one thing will get you in and not one thing will keep you out. Um, but we understand kind of where you're coming from and all those different buckets to figure out how we can help you um, achieve the goals that you've identified. Um, and again, everyone has opportunities for growth and in areas that they want to improve and that's wonderful you know lean into that there are certainly um places to develop that and that's why you're getting the mba i must definitely completely agree with that um the next question was uh what makes tepa a great school for people looking to change careers yeah so whether it's the full-time or part-time program we've seen lots of students um achieve this through the mba program uh, Full-time students certainly have the internship experience between the first and second year to really apply some of the learning that they've had during their first year in the academic program. Uh, Part-time students, however, are applying their knowledge right away. Um, so they're taking classes in the evening online and then going to the job the next day and applying what they're learning. Um, so some of our part-time students have even been able to transform and grow, be promoted while they're in the MBA program. Um, but certainly the, the core classes that we give you, the business fundamentals, the analytics, um, using data to make better decisions, and then the leadership, it's the soft skills too. Like you have to be able to communicate. Um, you can't just be the smartest person in the room. So all of that really make our students stand out. Um, so whether it's a complete transformation in function in industry or maybe a slight pivot, um, every student has different career goals uh, and our career counselors work with our students even before starting the MBA program. I know over the summer they've been working with some of our incoming students with their resumes, networking, um, some of the pre-MBA experiences that our students have. Um, so there's a lot of support that students get also from the clubs the professional clubs and organizations as well uh, to help navigate that change. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jackie. Um, so this is going to be the last question that rounds out the, the pre-submitted questions uh, coming to, through to Tepper. Uh, let me get it on the screen, first of all. What do you expect to see out of a Tepper student whilst they're in the program and after graduation? Well, I guess I'll phrase this answer as maybe some advice that I would give to students that are coming into the program and then after graduation. Um, some of the most successful students I've seen at Tepper are the students that take time to get out of their their social bubble. Certainly we all have some students or places that we gravitate to, um, naturally so, uh, completely understand that. But I, I think the most successful students are the ones that go out of their way to spend time interacting with people that are beyond that. Um, you know, never spend lunch alone. That's one of, one of uh, one piece of advice one of our alumni gave our students. And it's really true, like they, you should always find somebody um, perhaps that you haven't talked to before as much 
Um, in a smaller program, naturally, you'll have lots of opportunities to do that, but making intentional time to connect with people um, beyond your natural circle of friends, I think can be very valuable because these people are a part of your life, not just during the school, but well beyond as connections in professional organizations, companies, um, you know, students go through a lot of life changes too during the program, whether it's relationships, loss of loved ones, moving, career changes, all sorts of things. And, and the students in your network are going to be the ones to support you through all those too. So um, I guess a bit, of, a bit of advice would be to, to really take the time to get to know the people that you're taking these classes with, because they're going to be a part of your future uh, for much, much longer than the two, two years or 32 months that you're in the program. Brilliant. Thanks, Jackie. Um, so that concludes our pre-submitted questions. Um, so I'm now going to flip over to the questions that are coming in via the chat function. Um, a quick quick note, there's five minutes left until the draw um, for the, the admissions fee waiver. Um, I'm going to probably work a bit backwards because I see that Jerry's also answering some questions that are coming through. Um, so one question here is, how much work experience will be suitable for a candidate to get admission minimum? Um, yeah, so in terms of the range, you know, you can look at the class profiles that might be helpful for students to kind of get an idea of where 80% of our incoming students come from academically, professionally, geographically, all sorts of data is provided there. Um, but for the full time program, it tends to be between two and eight years, around five seems to be a sweet spot of where the average is, but there are students that are below that, above that. Um, for students that have less than two years of experience, I would say really think about why the MBA and why now, because we'll certainly likely ask you that if you're in the interview process with us. Um, and you might have had some really strong internship experiences too, and that can be really helpful for us. Um, if you're above the eight years, think about the value that you're providing. Think about all of the um, you know, professional experiences you've had that you can bring to the classroom that some of our students with less experience might have. Um, and it's really all about the quality. It doesn't matter if you've been working eight years in, a, a, you know, maybe a basic entry level role um, or two years of really progressive experience. It's really about the quality uh, of that time that you've been working. So um, think about that as well. But Five years seems to be about average, but again, there's a wide range of where students come from professionally, academically, and much more. And you're not just a number too. Just remember that, please. So there's a question, I guess, that kind of builds on that, that's come through from Partho, which was speaking about um, having a PhD in management and experience more than 15 years. Um, and I think the add-on to that was if they would still need to go ahead with a GMAT score in that situation. So with the application with Tepper, um, this, if you do submit a test score, it needs to be valid within the past five years. Um, but in the, in the application, we have had the test waiver that you can apply for within the Tepper application. Um, so we're looking for your quanti quantifiable skills, your coursework that you've taken. Um, so the questions will be prompted within the application if that's something that you would like to pursue. Um, but again, students that are admitted with the test waiver will have to take an MBA, um, sort of a math class that we've created before enrolling in the program, just to make sure that you're comfortable and prepared for the curriculum that we have. So that might be an option for them to consider. Okay, brilliant. I think we've got just two minutes left. Um, so I guess we can take one more question from, so I'm gonna go, from Dr. Sunil, because that's the question that I can see at the moment. Um, he asks, is there a policy for someone who's applying for a second MBA? There's not. So we will accept your application, but what I would encourage you to do is to think about how this is different. You know, what is different about our program than perhaps an experience you've already had? Um, and you'll want to likely address that in your optional essay, because we'll want to know. Um, so while there is no policy, but certainly we'll want to know um, how this might be different for you. So think about the curriculum, the career opportunities, um, all of those components and why this is a different experience for you. Um, so yeah, there, there's no policy, but um, definitely use the optional essay to help us understand more about why this MBA, why now, uh, and how it might be different. Brilliant. So thanks so much, Jackie, for taking the time out to tell us a bit more about the Tepper MBA. 
Um, again, just to remind everyone that there's going to be a Zoom session later on today at 10 a.m. Pacific. So if there's any questions that weren't answered in the session, please feel free to join that session to kind of get a bit more detail about things that you were curious about. Um, again, I'll say that there is going to be the the giveaway. I'm not quite sure how it's going to happen, but I'm just going to mention it one more time. And I'm going to be incredibly shameless now and say again, like the video and subscribe to GMAT Club uh, just to help us keep providing you guys the content that matters when it comes through uh, for the MBA application process. Um, but yes, if you guys could just join me again in thanking Jackie and also thanking Jerry, who's been working very hard behind the scenes in terms of answering your questions. Um, he's been doing a great job. I've been seeing all the kind of questions and responses coming through. So, so thanks a lot for that, Jerry. Um, yeah, so thank you, Jackie, once more. Um, and I'll see you guys hopefully in the next session that we've got for the rest of the week. Fine. Thanks, everyone. Bye.